Hello. In this video, we're going to be doing some problems involving sequences, uh, the sort of which one could expect to find on the King Canadian Math Kangaroo Contest for grades 11 and 12. Before we start, I want to remind you that the best way, the number one way to get the most out of this video is after I've read the problem, pause it and spend some time trying to figure out the solution for yourself and then compare it with the way I go about determining the answer. So in this first question, we're told that the increasing sequence 1, 3, 4, 9, and it keeps going, includes all powers of 3 and all the numbers that can be written as the sum of different powers of 3. The question asks, what is the hundredth element of the sequence? So the terms of our sequence look like some sum where we have 3 to the kn plus 3 to kn minus 1 dot 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 all the way down to 3 to the power of k1, uh, where all of these k's are distinct. So the trick we're going to do for this video is uh, we're going to represent all of these numbers as binary digits, uh, placing a 1 if the corresponding power of 3 appears and a 0 if it doesn't. So for example, uh, the number uh, 3 squared plus 3 to the power of 0, this is a term in our sequence, and we're going to represent it as a binary number. Uh, first, we're going to put a 1 on the very right because 3 to the power of 0 appears. Uh, we're then going to put a 0 because 3 to the power of 1 does not appear. And we'll put a 1 again because 3 to the power of 2 uh, does appear. And that's where we'll stop because uh, we can see that the rest of the higher powers do not appear for this term. Now recall we have the polynomial identity. Uh, that works for any integer that says x to the power of k minus 1. Uh, this is equal to x minus 1 multiplied by x to the power of k minus 1 plus x to the power of k minus 2 plus dot 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 uh, all the way down to uh, x to the power of 0 which is just 1 for uh, any positive integer. So if, we're, if we plug 3 into this, uh, this equation tells us that uh, 3 to the power of k minus 1 is equal to 2 multiplied by 3 to the power of k minus 1 plus dot 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 all the way down to uh, 3 to the power of 0. Uh, we multiply the 2 into this expression and add 1 to both sides. So we get that 3k is equal to 2 times 3 to the power of k plus 1 plus dot 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 plus 2 times 3 to the power of 0 uh, plus 1. And clearly this term, uh, if we instead of multiplying by 2, just multiply by 1 everywhere, uh, then we would get something strictly smaller. So we find that 3 to the power of k plus 1 plus 3 to the power of k plus 2 going all the way down to 3 to the power of 0 uh, must be strictly smaller than 3 to the k. So the point of this is that uh, each of these, as these binary strings uh, increase, the corresponding terms of the sequence also increase. So what that means is, in order to find the 100th element of the sequence, we only need to find the 100th element of uh, increasing binary digits. In other words, this is the same thing as representing the number 100 in base 2. Well, in order to represent 100 in base 2, uh, we could start off by writing that there's 164, uh, 132, so if we added 64 and 32, we get a total of 96. Uh, then we can't fit in any 16s and we can't fit in any 8s. Uh, but we could fit in a 4, that would bring us exactly to 100, so then we let the 2 to the power 1 column and the 2 to the power 0 column uh, be 0. Uh, so finally, this binary digit then must be the digit representing the 100th number, and uh, again the way in this is represented is uh, we see that we have seven digits here, which means we start with uh, 3 to the power of 6 appears because the leftmost digit is a 1, plus 3 to the power of 5 appears because the next digit is a 1. Uh, then we don't have any 3 to the power of 4s, we don't have any 3 to the power of 3s, but we do have a 3 to the power of 2, 
Uh, then there's zero, which means we don't have any three to the powers of one and no three to the power of zeros because of the final zero. So three to the power of six is 729, three to the power of five is 243, and three squared is nine, which gives us a final answer of 981. So our final answer here is B, 981. For this next question, we're told that the first element of a sequence is a1 equal to 0. And we're told that if n is greater than or equal to 1, then we're going to set a n plus 1 to be a n plus minus 1 to the power of n times n. If a sub k is equal to 2008, what is the value of k? So the way I'm going to go about this is I'm going to start expanding this expression and see if we can find some sort of pattern. So if I have some term a to the n, uh, then I know from our formula up above, this is the same as a to the n minus 1 plus minus 1 n minus 1 multiplied by n minus 1. Uh, and then I can apply this uh, pattern again to the term a n minus 1. Uh, because that term I now know is equal to a to the n minus 2 plus minus 1 to the power of n minus 2 multiplied by n minus 2. And then I still have uh, this second term over here. It's the minus 1 to the power of n minus 1 multiplied by n minus 1. And I'm going to keep doing this pattern. And well, where is this pattern going to stop? Uh, so there's two different cases. So uh, in the first case, let's suppose that n is even. So then I'll keep subtracting 2's off until I get to uh, the very last term would be a2 because this sequence, uh, the very first term is a1, so there is no a0. So I would have a2 plus minus 1 squared uh, multiplied by 2 plus minus 1 to the power of 3 multiplied by 3 plus dot dot dot. Uh, going all the way up, and we still have that uh, first term of the expansion, n to the power of n minus 1 multiplied by n minus 1. Uh, so expanding this out, we find that all the even powers will be positive, so I'm going to get 2 here, and all the odd powers will be negative, so I'll get minus 3 here, and I'm going to group these terms together, so I'll get 2 minus 3, and I'll get 4 minus 5, going all the way up, until I get to n minus 2 minus n minus 1. So the terms in each of these parentheses just ends up being a minus 1. And uh, how exactly how many are there? Well, I stop at n minus 1, but I'm only going up, if we look at the right term, I'm going up by 2 at a time. So there wouldn't be n minus 1. There would be half of those, uh, which is to say I would get a sub 2 minus n minus 2 divided by 2. We can make this more precise if I figure out what a sub 2 is. So a sub 2, plugging this into our equation above, uh, we know this is a sub 1 plus minus 1 to the power of 1 times 1. And since a, a sub 1 is equal to 0, uh, this simply means uh, that a sub 2 is equal to minus 1. So let's try and solve this then uh, for when a sub k is equal to 2008. If a sub k would be equal to 2008 in this case, uh, then that means we would have this being equal to a sub 2, which we know to be minus 1, uh, minus k minus 2 over 2. This is the formula we've determined for an even uh, index. So I can add 1 to both sides, and I obtain uh, 2009 being equal to negative k minus 2 divided by 2. And I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 2 in this case. So we get that uh, minus 4018 is equal to k minus 2. And if I add 2 to both sides, uh, we get that this is minus uh, 4016. Uh, but clearly this is impossible, right? Because our sequence starts at a sub 1 and the indices only increase. So we can't possibly have a negative index. 
So this tells us that our index must be odd. So now we're going to expand this term an uh, just like we did uh, last time, except now we're going to be uh, expanding it as if n were an odd number and we're gonna see how that changes things. So uh, just like before, the first step, we can find that an is equal to an minus one plus minus one to the power of n minus one times n minus one. And we just keep expanding all the terms, uh, but this time, since uh, n is odd, we're eventually going to stop at uh, a sub one. Uh, so it'll be a sub one plus minus one to the power of one times one plus minus one to the power of two times two plus dot 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 and we're going to keep going until we get uh, back to our first term in the expansion minus one to the n minus one multiplied by n minus one now we're told that uh, a sub one is equal to zero so that term will simply disappear and again all the odd exponents will give us a negative, all the evens will give us a positive, and I'm gonna group the numbers together. So I'm gonna have minus one plus two plus minus three plus four plus dot dot dot, and we get all the way up to the top until we get to minus n minus two plus n minus one. And again, how many terms do we have? Well, we stop at n minus one, but remember, uh, if we look at these parentheses, the digit on the right is always going up by two, and so we really only have half of the n minus one numbers. If we were to suppose that one of our terms was equal to 2008, uh, if uh, some a sub k was equal to 2008, this means that 2008 is equal to k minus one uh, divided by two, so I multiply uh, the two on both sides of this equation. So we get 4,016 is equal to k minus one. And then finally adding k to both sides of the equation, uh, we find that k is equal to 4,017. So this is the uh, final answer. Our final answer here is C. For this final question, we're told that we have a sequence of integers which is defined by setting a0 equal to 1, uh, a1 equal to 2, and then for all n greater than or equal to 0, we're going to let a n plus 2 be a n plus a n plus 1 squared. And we're asked what is the remainder of division of the term 2009 by 7. So in other words, if we're trying to determine the remainder by seven, we're really doing our arithmetic mod seven. So instead of just uh, cranking out all the terms of the sequence, uh, we can just write a bunch of them mod seven. And since there's only uh, finitely many remainders, namely the numbers uh, zero to six that can remain after we work mod seven, that means that there needs to be some sort of uh, repeating pattern. There has to be some cycle in the sequence because there's infinitely many numbers. So we need to find where that pattern is. Now we know that it starts off with a0 being equal to one and a1 being equal to two. So we just need to find somewhere where this repeats, where we have the number one uh, followed by the number two, uh, of course, when we're working mod seven. So let's just start cranking some of these out by hand and determining what they are. So a2 would be equal to one plus two squared, uh, which is just equal to five. A3 would be equal to two plus five squared. Uh, so this would be five times five is 25, uh, plus two is 27. But remember we're working mod seven, so we have to reduce uh, modulo seven, which is six. A4 would give us uh, five plus six squared in this case. Well, six times six is 36 plus five is 41. And again, reducing mod seven, uh, we get a six. A5 would be six plus six squared. So six squared is 36 plus six is 42. And uh, 42 is divisible by seven. So that is zero modulo seven. A6 would be six plus uh, zero squared, which again is just six. A7 is zero plus six squared, which is uh, 36. 
But again, we're working modulo 7, which is simply equal to 1. A8 would be equal to 6 plus uh, 1 squared, which is 7, uh, but modulo 7, that's simply 0. A9 would be 1 plus 0 squared. Uh, 1 plus 0 is 1. A10 would be 0 plus 1 squared, which again is 1. And A11 would be 1 plus 1 squared, which is 2. Aha! Finally, we found it, our repetition of 1 and 2 in the sequence. So we know now this sequence repeats every 10 steps. So that means that the remainder of a sub 2009 upon division by 7 has to be equal to the remainder of a sub 9 on di upon division by 7. And we've determined that a sub 9 uh, divided by 7 has remainder of 1. So our final answer here is B1. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, you can send an email to info at mathkangaroo.com or visit mathkangaroo.ca.